Hello everybody. Here's a quick review of the Maxpedition EDC bag and what I carry. And I can't really call this an EDC bag. It's a little bit heavy. You can carry it on your person, but um, it's big and bulky, to be blunt. Not quite what people look for EDC. So I call it my solve some problems bag or my everyday with me bag so this is what i've got uh, my sheepdog patch on the hook and loop field i've got an old gerber fixed blade circa 1990 i think uh, it's a Model 400. I can't remember what they call this. I think it's pre-Gator, even. Uh, but it is marked Portland, USA. So that's that's the knife. I have a watch band compass um, that I did verify by using a real compass to make sure it actually pointed north. These inexpensive compasses... Uh, not a lot of quality control there, and I've had several that I've just tossed away because they don't point north. Got a zebra, a zebra pen, uh, good for jotting down notes with. You're not going to write too long of a letter with it because you'll run out of ink uh, quicker than you would with like a big a big pen or something. But anyway, uh, handy to have with you. On the inside, a pocket medic by Adventure Medical. This is really handy. Uh, I use stuff from it and restock it. Um, great little pouch. And nice, uh, nice small pre-made first aid kit. Of course, you could do this yourself and use a small bag or something. But uh, uh, for what you get and everything. This is a nice little value and just makes life easy. On the key ring, have a Swiss Tech light. Uh, that's a spare key to a cabinet, an extra handcuff key, and a P38 can opener that I have yet to use to open a can, but uh, once again, still nice to have it. Keep a few things to keep myself clean. Um, shout wipe and goes for when I food bomb my clothes. And wet ones to uh, clean myself up if a restroom's not handy to wipe my hands or face. I also keep a pair of fingernail clippers. Um, my wife is forever putting fingernails, clippers, other than where they're they uh, were last at, so I always know where mine are at. My Olight i3 AAA flashlight, a bright little light. A Home Depot carpenter's pencil. Because I am old and having trouble seeing small print, a magnifying glass. Chapstick, because after I clean my face, I can put chapstick on my lips. A Night Eyes small, I hesitate to call this a multi-tool, but it's a little bit of a pry bar, screw bar. Uh, I have no idea if that wrench actually works, but that's come in handy. A Sharpie orange. They come in multiple colors. A Bic mini lighter. I used to keep a piece of uh, pipe cleaner wrapped around it so the, uh, the button wouldn't get depressed and all the butane leak out. But I haven't had that problem so I ditched the uh, 
the uh, pipe cleaner several years ago. A couple of uh, safety pins. A RAV Power charger. And yes, I think they're marketed as lipstick chargers. Don't say anything. It's not lipstick. It's a charger. My Leatherman Squirt multi-tool. Good little multi-tool. Uh, you could put a little larger multi-tool in here. Um, I like the Squirt. Some jute twine. I've carried 550 cord. Um, right now I've got some jute twine. It's strong stuff. I like it. In the back pocket, I keep my uh, kel P32. This is a, it's a collectible. And I know somebody's going to be upset with me calling a kel a collectible. Really not. It's a kel -Tec. They are what they are. Um, this is uh, the first model because it has um, an extractor. It doesn't have what's sometimes called the Franken extractor. And I'll bring in another kel to show you what I mean. Um, that large extractor. I think the ones now are coming not quite that big, of course. This is a PF9. So this has the original extractor, 32 caliber. This gun doesn't have a high round count, but it has been flawless. Most of my shooting has been with full metal jacket because I really don't think a 32 ACP is going to give you a whole lot of expansion at the velocity that the bullet travels from this size gun. Uh, I have shot silver tips through it and it ran just fine. But most of my shooting is with uh, full metal jacket ball ammunition. Uh, I've probably put 10 to 12 boxes through this. I don't shoot it a whole lot because this is basically a point and shoot gun. Uh, rudimentary sights on it. So, uh, just every time I've pulled the trigger on this old gun, it's gone bang. If, uh, if you don't like kel -Tec, let me move over here to the other side of my workbench. Another option would be uh, North Americans 22. I was just cleaning this up. So these are not powerhouses by any means, and I'm not recommending them as primary carry, but um, I think they still beat a sharp stick. So, and on this Keltec, talking about Keltec for just a moment. This Keltec PF9 has been flawless after I had to send it off. Um, within 200 rounds or so, there was a catastrophic failure with a locking pin. Uh, brought it back to the local gun store where I purchased it. They boxed it all up, sent it back. Keltec sent it back to them. Not a not a cent out of my pocket to get the gun fixed, but I did want to, you know, kel quality control has always been questioned. Since I've gotten it back, um, shot this quite a bit, around a thousand round, which isn't all that much, but uh, about a thousand, twelve, thirteen hundred maybe rounds. It's been flawless. You know, since it's come back, it's gone bang. Every time I pull the trigger, except for that fatal initial time when it got sent off. And it took them about three months to get it back to me. So they are what they are uh, right now. It's a good gun. Not to be a kel hater or basher. I've had other name brand guns that I've had to send back. Uh, Smith & Wesson. Uh, Beretta. Uh, Winchester so uh, not it is what it is um, 
not bashing them, but that just is another example how any, uh, any gun that you purchase, you need to put some rounds through it um, just to make sure there's no glitches and it's, it's reliable. Anyway, didn't mean to go off um, into Gunland there. Small run in the rain pad from one of my favorite stores in Smyrna, Georgia. Going gear. A sewing kit to uh, help me out if I have a catastrophic clothing failure. Haven't had to use this yet. I could probably take it out, but it's been there for so long. I kind of like to keep it with me. And a, uh, oop, coming apart. Uh, some bank line, not the tar kind, it's just some twine, and a little piece of wire, and some couple of zip ties with a couple of zip bags on there. And that's it. Uh, had this bag for about five years, four to five years. Uh, it's been uh, in other gear bags, um, under the seat of my pickup truck in the trunk of my car. It's got some dirt and stains on there. Nothing that bad, but uh, it is a little stained. These are Teflon coated, so uh, Maxpedition advertises that you can wipe them off with a damp cloth and clean them up and that they don't really hold stains. Uh, I haven't done that. It's not that bad. Uh, you know, with Maxpedition, you pay for what you get. Uh, there's not a stitch in here that started to come loose. Uh, they use YKK zippers. The zippers still work just fine. The zipper pulls are still on there after five or so years. Give or take a few months. Um, this netting hasn't come apart. So, not a problem. Uh, I got some tack ties. I use if I do want to put it on a belt and just a uh, Blackhawk clip as well. So that's just a quick look, kind of a long term use review look at the Maxpedition EDC bag and what I carry to solve some problems. Thanks for watching and always remember to check your six.